I'm Pierce Alexander Lilholt, the captain of Floaty Boat, and I'm here to do a recap of the trip to Maryland. So, this was quite an epic trip. It was... It was rough. It was tough. It was harder than I thought it'd be. Honestly, I thought it was primarily going to be based around eating snacks. And it turned out not to be primarily about that. It turned out to be primarily about navigation. So that sounds crazy because all we were doing was going through the Delaware River, the CND Canal, down the Chesapeake Bay, and, and 10 minutes into Bogdan Creek. I mean, it's it's not some, you know tale of ancient mariners here but the trip started off pretty as easy as it could be all we did was we we took the boat to the dock at the Riverton Yacht Club we had it docked up and for some reason a bunch of people came to see us off that was awesome we were uh we were just kind of hanging out on, on the deck and uh, having some whiskeys, and it was a good time. It was an excellent time. And... And then the next morning... We left at 6.30. And you have never seen fog so thick in your life. I mean... I don't know if there's a fogness, fog thickness measurement, but I've never seen fog so thick in my life. And, you know, I've been out there in the mornings and it, it'll be foggy. I mean, foggy enough where you can't see land and you're only a mooring ball out. But usually that lets up, you know, the sun comes out at least by noon. There's no fog. I mean, it just doesn't exist. Well, this was nonstop for hours and, <laughs> and so we're going past and you know we could kind of see stuff we knew we get past philly and i'm not exactly sure what happened but we spun around and it might have been right after or before we ran aground we couldn't see anything couldn't see the shore couldn't see anything and my boat only draws two and a half feet i mean it's like you're up to your knee, maybe. So we were pretty close to shore, for sure. Sure, for sure. And and Tony had the till in his hand. He says, oh, I can feel something weird with that. And I, I grabbed it. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's scraping. We're scraping. We need to head back out. I don't know which way, but just the opposite way of that way. We need to go that way. And that's when we realized the app we were using, CMAP, C hyphen M-A-P, Letter C, not S-E-A, just letter C, hyphen map. Awesome app, and it's free. Let's see if I can't find a link and put that in the description. Um, well, I don't know if it's the internet connection. It wasn't tracking within the second, you know. So once we start on a heading, it shows you your, like, the line where you're about to be going. So once we got a good, on a good line, we used the compass that was on the boat. And I'd always joked about that compass. I said, well, why would this tiny little boat ever need a compass? What are we going to be doing? Circumnavigating the globe? <laughs> uh, I eat my words on that one because if we didn't have that compass, it would have been way harder to make it there way harder so that was challenging but and and it, and it was a little freaky not being able to say anything you'd hear huge ships you hear that in the distance, the distance and you can't see it I mean, and those are those are ship, ship crushers. Uh, I did have the uh, radar reflector raised up, and 
I got to thank Glenn Smith Sr. for recommending that one to me. He said something like, oh, yeah, you should have that if you're out there. And I was like, oh, sounds really expensive. And he's like, nah, like 50 or 60 bucks. I got one for like 28. I raised it up. And now ships with radar, the kind that can crush you, could see me. So that was just a little peace of mind. But the fog started lifting mm, lower part of Delaware River. We got into Chesapeake City, went to the public docks, which have all these signs that say no docking. I assume that means no docking for more than 24 hours because on the website it says you can dock there for 24 hours, but it looks like no docking. <laughs> they should have some provisions on that one. I think they do on the sign that's up above there. So, so we did dock right next to all the no docking signs. And... Then, you know, we had some some pate, some smoked trout, uh, some gruyere, a lot of good stuff. We were snacking. It was nice. Had some rum and went to bed. Well, I just put the new sea head in the in the in the boat, which it seems very nice until you forget to put that little thing on top of the uh, on top of the sea head to close it back up this is nothing wrong with sea head sea head's awesome this has to do with me forgetting to put that little thing back on there I don't know how I did it but like four or five in the morning I woke up feeling kind of nauseous because I was basically sleeping next to a human hamster cage and I think a bucket with um, hamster bedding shavings and human poop and and pissed. It's just so bad. And it made me so nauseous. I um I had to go find a flashlight, find the thing to put back on the hole. And and I went back to bed for two or three hours and when I woke up I was not feeling I was feeling seasick. It was just it was like the onset of it. And I should have put these little patches on. I don't know if you can see this behind my ear. I have these little patches here. Well, I figured that out. And here's another little patch. I have one on each side. I don't know if you can see that there. Little sticker. So I tried everything. I was chewing ginger gum. I was having ginger lozenges. I was even tried a couple ginger snaps. Um... Nothing was working. It was about eight hours out from there. So for about six hours, I was incredibly seasick. I put these patches on about two hours before that. I was still seasick for another hour and a half. Um, then we were about 20 minutes out, and I was up and down through the cabin. And Tony was having a great day. He was like, I feel great. <laughs> I feel great. He's like... I would come up so sick. I was like, oh. He's like, yeah, I just ate a sandwich. I, I thought I felt great before, but now I feel even better. <laughs> and so, so at least we had some laughs. Um, it was a good time, despite me feeling annihilated by the, uh, the seasickness. So I will never leave that hatch for the, uh, for the, for the toilet open again. That 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 will never happen. Um, then we got into the marina. I was still a little wonky, but I was. I could tell that if I was able to fall asleep, because I wasn't able to sleep the entire time. I kept going down trying to sleep. I would come back up, didn't sleep at all. And then we got back and. I could barely eat. I was just so nauseous. So so I had some of Tony's bread. Trujillo Bread Co. Yeah, that's right. And it was awesome. It settled my stomach. That was great. I'm glad he... I'm really gr glad he baked that loaf of bread and brought it with us. And... I had a glass of wine and... Um, I was starting to feel like I could go to bed. So I, I slept. I said, I'll sleep early. Wake up be well rested and, and then we'll tuck the boat away proper so I think Tony stayed up grilled some of the breakfast sausages I made for dinner which sounds like good dinner 
and I've done it before. It's a pretty good dinner. And I think he had some cheese, and I don't know what the heck he did. He was just having a good life. <laughs> He's having a high old time. He was really having a good time that day. He was feeling great. Just did a got to enjoy the really nice weather of the bay. I mean, the fog lifted uh, in the afternoon, and I could tell it was a beautiful day. So, so lucky Tony. <laughs> and then, so the next day we woke up, and we started tying the, uh, the fenders around. Tony was insisting on bowlins everywhere, and I only like two knots, so... Uh, so I went to go tie something, and then I did catch a nail in the forehead. Like right, I'd say right around this area, I caught that nail. <laughs> somewhere like, uh, not here so much, not over here, somewhere like right here. That's where I caught the nail. <laughs> I will say, didn't bother me that much, but it was... Uh, you know, kind of wanted to keep bleeding. There was a nail sticking out of the piling, and I just slammed my head into it when I was going to lay down on the dock to tie a fender on to uh, make sure the boat had some cushion. <laughs> yeah, I should have tied one onto that nail first before I slammed my head into it. And so I ended up actually, uh, I tried to use new skin on it, which works on smaller things. Like before we left, I got this little cut on my thumb. I put some new skin on it stop the bleeding almost immediately that stuff is great um but it wasn't working it was just bleeding too much so i actually used a hemostatic agent which is like some coagulant and uh it's like a powder i just poured it on there and eventually it just stopped it so i, I was pretty impressed by that and then we talked to some guy at the dock who said he thinks it's made out of uh he thinks he knows this stuff and it's made out of shrimp shells so <laughs> that's cool but, yeah, we went and uh, cooked some lunch. The lunch was awesome. Tony brought gigantic shrimp. They were, like, this big. They were not quite that big, but they were really, they were, like, the biggest shrimp I've ever had. His seasoning was on point. And then I brought some bourbon steaks from uh, from Wegmans. They're pre-seasoned, but they're really awesome. They're awesome on the grill or in a pan. And they're a little sweet. They're really good bourbon steaks. And... So we had surf and turf for lunch. At dinner time, a lot of people were like, what was in all that tinfoil? We had all this shaved beef we were going to do cheesesteaks with. Instead of that, I had like nine or ten, or I forgot, I made little tinfoil packets with a handful of shaved beef in each one with different seasonings. So there was like maybe ten different seasonings for the beef, you know, to have a little sample platter. And then we still had more of those shrimp leftovers, so we made all that. We, it was windy. It was really windy. It was getting chilly. It got real windy that night. So I got the table out in the cabin. We, uh, we put all the food out before Tony came down in the cabin. I queued up Captain Ron by using my phone as a Wi Fi hotspot, then using my tablet to, uh, to basically cast it to the Chromecast to the projector that's in the, uh, ceiling of the boat we opened up the projector screen and we basically had a feast we had a bottle of wine tony brought brought it had an anchor on it i can't remember the name of it it was pretty good and then at the end of the movie uh when albondiga came up which is a ship which is the name of tony's boat but it's also the ship where the the guys with the guns are coming after the wanderer with nobody knows that this is a secret about albondiga which also means meatball that's the name of the boat of the pirates in Captain Ron. So when that came up, we had a, a little swig of tequila. Then we went to bed. The next day we woke up. Uh, we rocked around quite a bit that night, but I still had these patches on. I was feeling fine when we woke up. I was still not seasick at all and not land sick when I got off. I think the patches are pretty good. I'll put a link in the description to these patches, but... Um, we ordered a pizza when we woke or, or yeah, I think almost, oh no, we tried to order a pizza when we woke up. That's what happened. We, we tried to order a pizza when we woke up from the rumor meal and they said they don't serve lunch until noon. 
but they did serve breakfast pizzas that have like egg on them or something. And I don't get it. Hey, you got the you got the oven fired up, okay? You've got the pizza oven working. You can't just like put different stuff on it. <laughs> I don't. I didn't get it. Because I was really excited to have one of their pizzas, and I do like this place a lot. I have no complaints, other than this weird menu timing thing. They, I don't know what they're doing. Um, so I wanted to have their pizza, and then I wanted to order crab dip to dip the crust in, but save that for another time. I will say that would have been really good. But what we did have instead was, I think it was Vinzini was the name of the pizza place i could be wrong i have to double check that we were a uh, gyro 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 however you want to say it uh pizza uh, g-y-r-o the greek like gyro or whatever pizza and it had um i think like shaved lamb onions tomatoes i think i had tzatziki sauce in the uh in the mixed in with the sauce it was really good and then we had just some garlic cheese stick kind of pizza it was a good combo great breakfast we watched uh, a movie it was actually ex machina or machina i'm not sure how you say it but um it was a movie about artificially intelligent robots because i don't know why tony never saw it <laughs> it's a pretty good movie and then shortly after that Tony's wife, Sue, came to pick us up. Thank you big time for that. That was awesome because it was a much more enjoyable ride back to have uh, have company there. And taking the train right now is not uh, advisable, you know, pandemic and everything. So you don't want to be hopping on public transportation if you don't need to. And we had a lot of, well, we didn't need to take all, but we had a lot of gear. We had two coolers we were bringing with us and uh, you know just a bunch of stuff taken off the boat so that was good so we ended up getting back late afternoon we were gonna leave a little earlier but you know what i'm actually kind of glad we had a little extra time to sit around and eat pizza and watch movies because it was uh, a good start to the day i think we were trying to order that pizza a little earlier but got delayed about an hour because then a lot of the places didn't open for pizza until 11. So long story short, I would say the fog was insane. The fog was, and I mean, the fog was border. It might've been the most dangerous thing we've done uh, because we were, we were cruising so blind. It was amazing. Uh, but we were going, we slowed down and we were, and we're already going so slow. And we were being, you know, having lots of lookout going on during the fog time. It was, it was really, uh, it was like nothing you've ever seen. I mean, you couldn't see anything. It was just every direction you looked, it was just white. <laughs> it was just, total whiteout fog and I knew there was stuff around there and because I mean we, we've done this trip before you should be able to see shore all over the place so lots of fog that's part of the story uh, I got seasick <laughs> it was really bad it's like might have been the worst case of seasickness I've had I can't think of anything that even comes close it was it was pretty uncomfortable it was just you know it's funny you, you know your brain's doing it and you, and you want to tell your brain hey brain stop doing that but your brain's like yeah there's this other part you don't have control over so <laughs> so i'm gonna do this right now and then you're like hey brain uh a hey brain i know this is all in the brain can you get that other part under control because this other part, we don't like that. It's like having, it's like having a second brain, bad brain. <laughs> it's just not a good one. What are you doing brain? I'm the brain. No, 
It's like, no, you thought you were the brain here. You think what you're thinking is what's in control. Let me tell you, you're not the one in charge. I'm the brain. I'll do what I want. You're just the guy. You're the guy who's got the brain. I'm the brain. I do what I want. And yeah, you really, you do realize that there are things about brains that, um, I mean, it's not, it's not a physical thing that happens to you when you get seasick. It's all in your mind. That's why they say, if you tell yourself, I don't get seasick, which I always asserted, I don't get seasick. I get land sick sometimes. And that is true, but I don't get seasick. A lot of people who just say that they don't get seasick. It's like. Their brain just says, okay, this isn't what we do. <laughs> and now my brain's like, you might do that. And now I put stickers behind my ear and I'm like, hey, brain. You think you, you think you're in charge? I've got stickers, okay? Yeah, that's right. I've got a sticker here. I've got a sticker there. Take that, brain. Yeah, can you handle stickers? <laughs> About to be putting some Lisa Frank stickers back there. Then let's see if we up the game a little bit. Oh, yeah! 